oh, you know what? The problem here is the XL and the XC are way different. So, we will, so if I put the res, uh, inductor here in series, so I'm going to go from here to here. And then I'm going to go from the capacitor to the inductor. from the inductor back to the ammeter. So I just added an R, R, C, L, everything. Now what was, X, C was like really huge and X, L was what, Re three, right? I think X, L was like three point something what was it? 3.6. And then XC was, uh, what was it? 10,000? 1, 3.60. So this is a circuit dominated by the capacitor because F is low. So it's almost like the inductor doesn't exist anyway, OK? Um, so the impedance here, if I want to, uh, let's see, if I keep it at 100, let's say, I, let me see here. Uh, let me, let's, let's go back to the 10K. Let me use a 10K resistor. So this is pretty much going to not exist. So the answer is going to be the same that we got when we just had the uh, RC, right? Now, so the ammeter reading shouldn't change too much. What was it a minute ago when we just had this uh, RC without the L? 0.39, right? Still 0.39. The L is like it doesn't exist. Now I can change the phase angle. What should the phase angle? I can check the phase angle equation. This one is almost going to be non existent again, right? So it's just going to be like having XC over R. So negative 13,260 uh, divided by 10K. OK. So tangent of the phase angle. So tan inverse of that. So negative, uh, how much is that? Uh, uh, give me in degrees, and then we'll change it to rads. So it should be like 60 degrees or 40, 50? 50, 53 degrees. And then in rads, it's going to be 0.92 rads. OK, so here is what that means picture-wise, phaser-wise. It means the voltage of the resistor and the current are in phase, but the voltage of the source is behind something like this. Let me. is behind by about uh, something like this. Is behind by about negative 53 degrees. Now, how could we even check that? Here's, here's how it goes. Here's where the oscilloscope comes in. The X uh, outlet of the oscilloscope 
goes across the what? The resistor. With the common, with the common touching one end of the resistor, the positive touching the other. This is the X outlet. The Y outlet of the resistor, with the common still touching that same common, and the other one touching the opposite end of the inductor. Uh, Okay, so if I go to channel uh, two here, Okay, so now, this is the voltage, this is channel one now. This is the voltage of the resistor. Here's channel two, it's about to come. Voltage total of the source. The voltage total is bigger, right? Than the voltage of the resistor. And if I want to measure the phase angle between them, I put them on the screen at the same time One of them is disappearing here. You could tell there's two of them there, but for some reason it's not freezing. This always this always works, but you know it never works when you really need it. Yeah, it's just. The XY mode, yeah, I could do the X. Uh, This is known as the XY mode, and this is one way of measuring the phase angle between them. If the phase angle was zero, it would be a straight line. If the phase angle was pi over two, it would be a perfect circle. So it's uh, between that. It's between zero and pi over two. But this should freeze, but I don't know why it's not freezing. But uh, Oh, there you go, finally. Now, notice which one is me reaching its max first. This is the big one. This is the big one now. It's reaching, this, this is the small one. That's the voltage of the resistor. The voltage of the resistor is reaching its max first. Then the voltage of the source, the total voltage, is reaching its max. So the voltage of the source is behind the voltage of the resistor, which makes sense. Now, how much is it behind? I'm going to measure now the difference between them. Uh, that's about one, uh, one point.